Hello guys, you know that it's been a while since 1.5 is released on both platforms, Android and iOS. We already fixed some bugs and that means that we can take a deeper look into 1.5. So, we have uh, 6 types of new benchmarks and one of them is betting benchmark. The cool thing is that, that you don't need a computer to play that benchmark. If you run out of money and don't have any computer, you can still play that benchmark and earn some, mon some money for a new one. And let's try this. As you can see the game is building two computers and we need to say which one is the best. So you can check those computers, you can see all the parts and you can. we need to check another. And as you can see maybe this computer is uh, way more powerful than the first one and we need to vote for him and confirm. And yes we are right. We won that benchmark and we have some money for a new build. So the next benchmark is Grandma Bench. The type of the benchmark is Potato Bench and that means that you need to build a worse computer and you will win that. This is a super strange but I think that's interesting. Fun fact is that I built a computer as my first computer in real life and I think that computer is pretty bad. So maybe I can win that benchmark. Yes, and I am the winner. I built the worst computer in the world and I earned three dollars for that. That's cool. As you can see the bot is building also bad computers. So that will not be super easy. And we can try another benchmark. So the third benchmark is EcoPro. The type of the benchmark is Ecology. You need to build a computer which are using the smallest amount of energy and you will win that benchmark. As you can see the benchmark shows how much watts the computers are using and which computer is using the smallest amount of watts that computer will be a winner. I'm fifth, my computer isn't so eco-friendly and we can check on other computers and see how the bullets built these computers. As you can see that computer is super eco-friendly and that's why we are not winners. So let's see what another benchmark have to offer. So this benchmark is different from the benchmarks which we had in version 1.4. In this benchmark you don't have to own a computer and you need to guess how much power the computer consumes. You can see the parts of the computer but you can't see all the specifications. That makes the benchmark a little bit hard but it's really possible to feel or know from the part name how much power that computer can consume and you need to guess. You don't need to say the exact amount of watts, you need to say about 50 around and I think that the computer will be that powerful about 200 watts and I'm completely wrong this computer is uh, using less energy than I thought and I really like this benchmark because you need to feel you need to know you need to have knowledge about computers how powerful are they and something like that so let's check another benchmark so this benchmark is a pretty similar to the benchmark from version 1.4. In 1.4 we had a benchmark called FPS per dollar. In this version we also have a benchmark FPS per watt. You need to get the best ratio between power consumption and FPS. You need to build a computer which is a pretty eco-friendly but also pretty powerful. You need to balance between these two aspects and you will get a second place or maybe better. So let's check on other computers. As you can see they are pretty balanced, pretty well balanced. And let's move on to the next benchmark and let's see what we got. So the last new benchmark is sponsored benchmark. In, that match, in this benchmark you must have a Kintel or whatever it is, it can be RMD, RVDA or other brands 
you must have a Kintel parts. As you can see, I have a processor which is called Kintel Lara R3, and that means that I can enter this benchmark because I have the part that the benchmark needs. This is a new scene of the benchmark. I really like this background. It, it's for me, it's like serious benchmark or something like this. I'm first. My processor is pretty powerful enough and my computer is pretty powerful enough. Let's check the other guys. As you can see, no, that's me. Let's check the other guys. As you can see, they can, they must use Kintel parts as well. The bots are also using Kintel parts or any other brands that the benchmark needs. And that means that everyone is equal in that benchmark. And let's move on the next 1.5 feature. So the next really cool PC Architect 1.5 feature is that the bots now are smarter than they was before in 1.4. And now bots can use SLI, that means multiple video cards or crossfire, they can overclock their parts, RAM sticks, processors and video cards. And that keeps the game pretty well balanced because if you can use SLI, bots also can, except the free version. In free version you can't use multiple video cards and the bots also can't use it. So let's check other guys what they build. So as you can see they have a freeway SLI. That little logo on the processor is means that means that the processor is overclocked. I don't know the exact numbers how much it's overclocked, but it's really overclocked. I don't really remember the original frequency and this is a freeway SLE the video cards isn't overclocked so that's how bots working right now and let's check the other feature a lot of you guys wanted uh, integrated graphics and we finally implemented integrated graphics in the game so in some of the processors you can find iGPU name which is that means integrated graphics processor name and iGlapu clock speed and yes finally integrated graphics now is implemented implemented in the game 1.5 and full working and I can demonstrate that in the computer there is a little GPU logo next to the processor and that means that the processor have integrated graphics and as you can see there is a no video card and I can go to the benchmarks I need to choose a computer the game says that the computer works and I can do any benchmark with no graphics card only integrated into processor and the new ports is also available so we have implemented uh, two or three video cards which is called RVDA, GTX 2000, AT and these cards are pretty high end, they are powerful, they are expensive and they are good. And so much people wanted a more powerful power supplier. So there is it, 1800 watts, I think that will be enough for all your 4 base SLIs and super extremely powerful computers and there is a some new processors with integrated graphics as you know we implemented integrated graphics so we need a processor with these graphics and there is it so these are new parts and let's talk about new difficulty scaling and a reputation system so when i click on the benchmarks you can see there is a difficulty and the difficulty level on this benchmark is free and then this benchmark it's 8, that's pretty harder, the 10 is the maximum level of the difficulty and I can try any of these benchmarks let's choose a computer and I will say the other things that you need to know and the game says that the level changed after one competition if I will win the next competition the difficulty level of this benchmark will be 4 and that means that the benchmark will be even harder to win and the game 
gets harder and harder when you get stronger and you have more money and you're building more powerful computers. This system will keep the game pretty well balanced and tweaked, call whatever you want, you know what I mean. And there's an email reputation, sh reputation system. When I sell any computer, I have plus 50 XP and my level is second now. Two, right. that means that the other email offer will be bigger. The customer will need more power, for, more power, more expensive computer. The offers will be stronger, bigger and something like that. So personally, I really enjoyed this new reputation system. I think that the system will keep the game more balanced and tweaked and that's why I like it. So we have another pretty big change on the game, which is calendar. In calendar, now you can see much more things. And as you can see, when you click on the day, you can see what events happening that day. And there is a more than one benchmark on the same day. And I think this is real cool because you can choose the any benchmark you want on that day. Maybe there you can see there is a processor on 13 day and that means that the new processor will came out on that day and you can see all the benchmark info on the calendar you can see the difficulty the type of the benchmark and everything you need to know and i think this new calendar is super useful when you're clicking the next month it doesn't skip the next month it's just the show next next month that's how the new calendar works and I can take a 13 day on the windmill benchmark and I can skip to that day and I can play that benchmark. This is the pretty useful calendar for playing and planning your game. There is another small change that will help you to play it a little bit faster or make it more comfortable to play and you doesn't need to click on the box over and over again you can just uh, hold on the box and all the boxes will open at the same time i think this is pretty useful it's a small thing small change but it can help you to save some time and now we have support for more resolutions if you phone have a notch on the display on the top of the display or the bottom now maybe the game will be more adapted to your screen not for the all phones it's not perfect but but it's way better than it was before and i think that it will be helpful for most of the users which will have a infinite display or notch on the top i think that was all about update 1.5 i hope that you liked it and the next update will come in a few or a couple of months who knows